So now some more definitions. Now you have introduced this intervals, interval estimators. So we can define some terms related to this, how good that interval is. Okay. Suppose if you have an interval estimator given by this uh, lower function L of x and upper function by U of x for a particular parameter th theta, its coverage probability is the probability that it covers the true parameter. Okay. You understand this? So basically mathematically we are saying what is the probability that the true parameter lies in this interval. Okay. So this is what we are going to call it as coverage probability with what probability you are I mean uh, you are covering. Now similarly if I have an interval estimator given by L and U functions for a particular parameter 3 its confidence coefficient now is the smallest value of its coverage probability across the parameter set. So we just said this is the coverage probability and my theta can come from any value over my parameter space, right? That is something which is not in my control. Theta can be any value. Uh, where uh, theta like now I have to look at the worst case. So I will take the smallest value of this coverage probability over my parameter space as my confidence coefficient. Okay. So a couple of things to note here. So when I write a probability here, what is random here? Is the interval random or theta is random? Huh? It is the random quantity is this, not the theta here. Theta is fixed. Okay, you should be clear. Like earlier, when uh, we are studying the basic probability, we said what is the probability that x belongs to, let us say, some interval a and b. There, let us say, if uh, let us say uh, x is uniform. Uh, let us say 0, 1 and if I take A equals to 0. 0.1 and B equals to let us say 0. 0.5. So A and B were given there and X is my random quantity and I was looking into and how I computed this probability, I just computed this probability like 1 between 0. 0.1 to 0. 0.5. Right for the uniform distribution, this is how I computed. But here, theta is fixed. What is changing is L of x and U of x depending on your sample. Okay? And whenever I write this, we actually mean that probability that my theta is L of x and U of x is the meaning. Okay? Often this interval estimators we have along with their conf along with their measure of confidence one confidence measure we have is the confidence coefficient together with that they are called as confidence interval okay so you need to first give me confidence interval and you have to tell me the measure of the confidence, how you are going to measure the confidence. Maybe one, I have defined one measure here. I am interested in the worst case, like the smallest value of my coverage probability. Maybe somebody has other way of measuring it. Okay. For example, I may just say that, okay, I'm other possibilities. I may say that theta is itself is coming from some distribution. Okay. I do not know what distribution it is uh, and then 
I may be interested in expected value of this probability. Right? So here you are making multiple things. This interval is random and you will compute this quantity for a given theta, but then you want to take expectation over all possible values of theta you get. That could be another measure of your confidence. But you will not get into that. You will be only interested in the confidence coefficient here, which is the worst case coverage probability. Together, when you have this conf uh, interval estimator with this confidence coefficient measure that has given to you, you are going to take it as a confidence intervals. Okay, let's see that this confidence coefficients I have. Of course, does this quantity depend on theta? Yes or no? Does this uh, confidence coefficient depends on theta? How? Should it depend on theta? You have taken among all the thetas, you are taking already smallest value of that, right? You are already taking infimum of them, then where is the theta coming into picture here? Right? So these are probabilities, like see that probability is going to be between 0, 1, right? And you are looking into the smallest value of that probability, okay? So and uh, you are taking the smallest value across all the set, like you are already looked into all possible values of theta, the theta set, the parameter set. So it will not depend on any particular theta here. Okay. So then let us look into the coverage probability itself, how coverage probability should definitely depend on the theta, right, because this is for a given theta, whereas your confidence coefficient is over all possible values of theta. So let us see how to, how the theta affects our coverage probability and should it depend on how we define our interval estimators. So here is one example of calculating this thing on some estimators. Suppose let us say you have a random sample which is drawn from uniform distribution with parameter 0 and theta and theta is obviously unknown. So what could be a potential estimator for theta? So I have written here one natural estimator for theta is simply take the max value of that, right? Can this be a good uh, estimator for theta? But that is still a point estimator, right? Why here is a point estimator? So now let us try to come up with some couple of interval estimator based on this, okay? So what I have done here basically let us say this is my x1 and I let us say I have already ordered them x1, x2, x3 and uh, let us say xn. Actually I should have put them in the uh, in, in, in terms of our order statistics notation, it is the notation, right? x1 is the first order statistics, x2 is the second order statistic. And now what I am taking is I am taking this to be the value of theta in the first case and I am calling it as y. But instead of that, what I will do is, okay, now tell me this y will be most of the time, can it exceed theta or it will be lesser than or equals to theta? It is going to be less than or equals to theta, right? Because maybe my, my range is this much, 0 to theta and the samples I have observed here and uh, maximum value y I am going to get is somewhere here. So thinking along those lines, maybe I know that whatever the y I get, my actual value should be slightly larger than that, okay? So 
keeping that in mind, maybe I can take my intervals to be something here a y where a is something greater than 1. Okay, to the right of this and maybe another region, let's which we call it as by. I am now defining this to be my possible one estimator. Does this estimate, interval estimator make sense? Right now I am not telling what is A and B, but let us say A is just simply greater than 1. So that I am scaling whatever the Y I get by that number and look something on the other side also. This is one my possible interval estimator. So then why to, mm, scale them? You can offset them also. So for that I will consider an, another possible estimator instead of scaling like uh, this one I am just uh, taking that to be y plus c and maybe y plus d. I am just off, offsetting that. Okay. And here naturally I want this c to be greater than or equals to 0 and d of course has to be greater than c but maybe one more constant we can put that as d has to be less than theta. d can't be itself larger than theta. Okay. I mean we will be interested in d where it is way less than the value of theta. Okay, now let us try to compute what is the coverage probability of these two estimators we have. Okay. So, this is estimator 1. So, probability that theta belongs to a y b y interval this I can rearrange it as sorry this should have been capital Y. I have rearranged it by dividing them and I will get this. So, y is max of x1, x2 up to xn right. If x1, x2 are all uniformly distributed do we know the distribution of y? Did you people compute it before? What is the PDF of y? Huh? N into Okay, I just writing it here. This is going to be uh, by theta n if y is between 0 and theta and 0 otherwise. Okay. And then t is y by theta. What will be its distribution? What will be the distribution of t? Just by scaling, right? You can again check that I am just is going to be n minus t if t is between 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise. Okay. After by scaling this. Now, can I compute this probability? T, I already have its distribution. This is going to be integration of T which is n, T n minus 1 between 1 by b and 1 by a, a dt. This is going to be what? 1 upon, so you know how to integrate this, right? This is going to be what? Simply 2 to the power, t to the power n and when I put uh, t equals to 1 by a, I am going to get this quantity n minus 1 by b which is n. Did I make it correct? Let me cross check by b 1 by a, lower limit is 1 by a. Is this, can you do a sanity check? Uh, b is, this is always going to be positive, right? Because b is greater than a, so this quantity is going to be smaller than this quantity and uh, so this is fine. Now notice that this quantity here, does it depend on theta? This quantity does not depend on theta. So in this case, the confidence coefficient in this case, it does not depend on theta. Irrespective of what is theta, this is always you are going to get. So, confidence coefficient here is
coefficient for interval estimator 1 is simply this quantity 1 by a to the power n 1 by b to the power n. Okay, now let us look into estimator 2. Interval estimator 2. So, what is that? That is going to be P of theta, theta belongings to y plus c comma y plus d. So, this is nothing but probability that y theta is less than or equals to y plus d less than or equals to y plus c. This further I want to simplify such that should I get it in terms of uh, yeah I think it is again try better to get it in terms of t so that okay. So let me divide it by t. So this is going to be dividing here could be an issue what we can do is Huh? Subject to y. No, we can do that. Uh, just a minute. Okay, let's not worry about time being. Theta. What was our? Uh, you said uniformly between theta. What is the parameter space of theta? Did we say anything about uh, where is the theta? We just said theta is a para, uh, theta like uh, range. So theta is a positive quantity here, right? Because we said uniform zero theta, right? So theta has to be naturally greater than zero. Then only it makes sense. So let's find. Then let's. It's no issue in dividing by theta throughout. C by theta less than or equals to one less than or equals to y by theta plus d by theta. This is fine. No issue in dividing by theta. So now, now let us get into this into y by theta. So now if I want to write y by theta here. So now I know that y by theta is upper bounded by 1 minus c by theta and lower bounded by 1 minus d by theta. And I already know what is the distribution of y by theta. It is this. So this is nothing but now the lower limit is 1 upon d by theta, 1 upon c by theta and uh, the distribution I have is t into sorry n into t to the power n minus 1 dt. So what this is going to give me? This is going to give me 1 upon c by theta minus 1 upon d by theta to the power n. Now you see that this quantity interval estimator 2's coverage depends on theta. Okay. Okay. Now let us do a couple of sanity checks. Okay. Now let us take estimator 1. If I let n go to infinity, what should happen to my coverage probability of estimator 1? If I let n go to infinity, so ideally like if I have large number of samples, I should be able to do a better estimate, right? Large number of samples that I should be able to give you, I should be able to exactly give an interval which covers and uh, I should be more uh, get more and more precise. So as n tends to infinity, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0 because both of them are less than 1. 1 by a is less than 1, 1 by b is also less than 1. So uh, coverage probability goes to 0 for as a, this is as n tends to infinity as and for 2, for 2 does this happen for the second estimator also? So as n tends to infinity, this is also going to happen because theta is anyway less than d, it has to be less than c. So both of them are less than 1, so this will also go. 
arrow as n goes to infinity. But now this is, does not matter what happens to theta, but on the way if you look into this as theta goes to infinity, what is going to happen to the coverage probability of estimator 2? This is also going to go to 0, right? Because if you fix c and d and let theta go to infinity, this get killed, this get killed, then 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. So second one, irrespective of where is theta, if you have enough number of samples, it will also give you uh, in good coverage probability. Okay, so uh, let me stop.